Labor's housing fund has been dealt another blow in the Senate. And it seems the Prime Minister's $2 billion housing announcement at the weekend has done nothing to actually move the needle in terms of getting the Greens over the line. It ain't good enough, which is why the Greens are standing here today. We will put this bill off until the Prime Minister comes back from National Cabinet with a plan to help renters. We don't need to wait until the 16th of October. We can do this today. We can make progress today. You can leave your coalition colleagues uh, <coughs> behind. You may have said, uh, Senator Farrell, that the Greens were losing control. I would actually contend it's you that are using, losing control, which will be demonstrated by the fact that you can't even control your legislative agenda today because you haven't done your homework. 36 ayes and 22 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Parliament has just passed the historic bill that will allow a referendum to be held on an Indigenous voice to Parliament. Minister, where in the wording proposed to create a new chapter in the Constitution is the voice restricted from offering advice to the government and the executive on any issue it chooses? I think it is patently clear. Do not tell me that the proposition the Prime Minister has outlined is not needed in this country. I am not interested in culture wars. I am interested in closing the gap. And Laura Tingle, very nice to have you here. Let's start with the housing. Um, talk about it from a political point of view, from the government's point of view. How big a deal was this that they didn't get this bill through? Well, it's been an unusual thing for the government not to be in control of this, uh, uh, without a doubt, Sarah, the fact that it's been delayed. Mm. Uh, but I think they still seem pretty confident that they have got the upper hand on this with the Greens. I mean, there's a lot of positioning, all this talk about double dissolution elections, as we discussed last week. Mm. This is a big call mm. for the government to be saying, you know, we're going to the election uh, with, with this issue unresolved. Well, especially, presumably, especially with the, with the voice in play. With a voice in play, um, and I think we've got to sort of see this as, uh, you know, a, a lot of positioning before we go into the winter break. Mm -hmm. uh, the government, um, you know, I think we saw from that interview, the issue about rents is really one for the states. Mm. Uh, in a lot of ways, that splinters it off from being the Prime Minister's ultimate responsibility. If he can keep it that way, you know, the, the government, however, is sort of basically cornered or wedged between the Reserve Bank, which is continuing to take these really hard line decisions on uh, rates, which is hitting uh, borrowers, mm. and the Greens, who are being friends of the renters. So it is actually a bit of a tricky position, but they they seem pretty confident that they can sort of use this to push back on the Greens, who have obviously been a very big threat to them. So, um, and from the Greens' point of view, what is... I asked I asked Max chandler Mather this, but I don't think I have the answer, <coughs> which is what is their strategy? If, if they haven't got a big shift coming or a big change, what, what are they doing stopping it now? What are they hoping to achieve? They're keeping the subject in play. Mm. I think that is the bottom right. line, Sarah. Everybody's still talking about this. Mm. Uh, you know, people are... It, it gives them a, a platform... Uh, you know, they they think that uh, they can sell the two billion dollars over the weekend as a as a win for mm. them, uh, and they not unreasonably. Well, yeah, um, and but the government is saying, look, we did this without the Greens. Mm. The Prime Minister was saying in the Parliament this week, we can do other stuff in uh, in this space without the Greens. So it's going to be a real tussle, I think, just to see who can get the most oxygen out of this for the next few months. OK, let's talk about The Voice, because there's been some very powerful moments this week. Just take us through what happened <coughs> today as the questioning continued. Uh, well, essentially, it, it, it was a powerful uh, uh, sort of start to the week, but uh, the, the Coalition has continued to ask these questions along the lines of the ones we've seen in this uh, in this package, where they're basically saying, oh, you know, tell us what The Voice you know, will do or won't do. Mm. And most of them are pretty sort of silly questions, really. Um, they're, they're just... And they're, they're not new strategy. They're basically going back to tactics they were using a couple of months ago, you know, things like Australia Day, will, will uh, The Voice be able to cancel the weekend, those sorts of things. Mm. And I think that question that we saw, we were saying, oh, define what it won't do. Um, but it's just continuing to play on those doubts that the community has. And I think without a doubt... It is working, uh, or the, the general concerns about the voice are working, and you know the government goes into the break and into the beginning of the campaign behind in terms of 
promoting the yes case. Do we know how concerned they are behind the scenes? What do we know? I think they are concerned. I think there's a concern that um, there's been too much drift, that there's been too many people in, this, uh, in the kitchen on this, mm. that uh, it really is time for the Prime Minister to come in and sort of take control of this debate, not the Indigenous caucus, not all those Indigenous leaders. I think there is a real push that, you know, that this will go down unless something really materially changes. And it's not about advertising, it's about that political leadership and that sense of political well, leadership. Well, that's a very big question. Do you think that Anthony Albanese has it in him to bring the debate back to sort of the beginning of a winning position? Well, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure, Sarah. Mm. I mean, uh, I think the Prime Minister would say, you know, look, I, I said we'd win the election and we did and you all doubted me. But the reality that a lot of his colleagues are thinking about is, well, we won the election despite a few completely huge stuff-ups by the Prime Minister. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of great political skills, but, you know, coming out on this big rhetorical position is something that we haven't really seen from him before. He's good at other things, but not necessarily that. So that is going to be a new defining moment for how he uh, develops as a Prime Minister, I think. Laura, thank you very much. And you did come in with... Uh, with a sniff and a bit of a cold. Thank you very much. Go and look after yourself. Thank you, Sarah.